this point, there are about 35 genes that we, the scientific community that works on this, has generally agreed that these are really associated with lupus. Every one of them has its own story to tell. And all we've done so far is open the door to that whole new vista of what it'll mean to understand how those genes work to increase the risk. They don't have a huge effect. The effects, relatively speaking, are small. They're twofold or 1.2 or something like that, but they're real and they're there and they have to be involved in how the disease works. And so they represent a, an enormous new potential for understanding where lupus comes from and how its mechanism operates. Those mechanisms then give opportunity for therapeutic intervention, new drugs, existing drugs that we are already using or are in the pipeline somewhere uh, may affect these pathways in ways that will be beneficial for our, our lupus patients. Some of them will be related to particular disease manifestations. There's one called ITGAM that our group was able to find a few years ago that, uh, in, that is twice as likely to occur in patients who have renal disease than those who don't. And so there'll be that kind of thing where the subsets of how the disease progresses will be related to the particular genes that the patient has. Um, it may reach the point at some, po some point, probably in the distant future, where these genes will be useful for diagnostic purposes. That's not the case at the moment. The optimistic part would be that the genetic, that the response of the patient will be determined partly by their genetic composition and in some situations strongly and then choosing the best therapy based upon not only the risk for, not only the lupus risk genes but also the genes that are important for that therapeutic uh, product uh, is, is likely to be playing a role in the next decade. Now that we've produced all these genes, the basic scientists who are interested in these genes are now saying, oh, that gene's important in lupus. Maybe I ought to go work on trying to understand why. And so there's, uh, we are continually recruiting uh, the best minds we can find to help make progress with, with lupus. So one of the things about the genetics is that uh, all of this comes from a very basic process. And uh, it has, it's, uh, it is broader and deeper than lupus itself. It comes from the fact that DNA has been the, the material that confers information from generation to generation probably since the beginning of life or very close and that uh, it has this very curious mechanism in which it doesn't do exactly right. It makes little mistakes and the little mistakes makes it possible for organisms to change. And the organism changing means that uh, we get to be a species. And the differences between us at the, at the one position on one chromosome are those differences of which there's estimated there's something like 40 million of them. The, uh, there'll be differences that confer risk or not risk for lupus. And that uh, that DNA is an ongoing chemical reaction in us and continuing in our children um, and has been going on for three and a half billion years without being broken. Lupus is a really complicated problem and uh, we're privileged to be in a situation in which we can tackle it and uh, it's wonderful to be making some progress. One of the things that patients could do if they'd like to participate in the genetic studies is to go to the Oklahoma Medical Research website and uh, if uh, they can find the lupus studies, lupus genetic studies on the OMRF website, just Google it and you should come right up, uh, then uh, uh, they can use and follow the instructions on the website and enroll themselves and go through the process of uh, becoming a participant in a lupus genetic study. And for that, all of us will be grateful. <laughs>